So using the chain mortiser, we've created the mortises for the posts. Now we're gonna get all that dry, dry fixed together if you like, or tried together dry. And then what we're gonna move on to are these braces. Now the braces, um, they come from the mill, so my mate down at the mill breaks them out to this shape. But I like to add a tenon. So what I'm doing here is cutting, cutting the, a tenon on. So I'm doing that on the table saw by running them over the top. Then I'll take the shoulders off. And these ones aren't actually very square. So I'm gonna try tidy up the actual shoulders there as well. So that's the next job, we'll get them done. Then we'll set the posts, we'll set the head out and we'll put all of these mortises for these. So we've got about another, I don't know, 12 mortises to do after we straighten them up. The next job was to do all the rest of the mortises. So this is a mortise machine and I don't actually own one of these. I rent this when I need it. And the company I rent this from uh, rents them all over the country. So again, you don't have to buy these things. You can rent them. Now it takes a little bit of getting used to and I wouldn't say it's the easiest machine to use, but just like anything else, take your time and uh, you know, practice on some scrap wood first, or alternatively get them to show you how it works if you go to the hire shop or wherever it is that you get it from. And um, you know, that's the best way to do it really. Anyway, so we had plenty of these to do. We had about another 12 to do for these mortises. And we often use a blower. You can see that just blowing the stuff out of the way. Now you can't really do this on your own because you need two hands to use this, but I have the luxury of Andy helping me out maneuvering this oak around because it's pretty heavy.
we have the basis of our frame all mortise and tenon together so you can see we've got the three main posts and then we've got our braces as well and everything's been mortised together with the chain mortiser and you saw how we made the tenons or the end of the posts so a nice detail a traditional detail is a stopped chamfer and so i'll do that all the way around the posts along the head as well just for detail so where you see the snap the chamfer stop here it will start again from the same distance now again you don't need to do any pencil marks here what i do is i set my router up and even though i've got a bearing guided bit in there you can see that it's a bearing guided one but i don't like the bearing running along the oak because sometimes the oak's a bit uneven where you get chips like this and it might sort of cut them out and it might sort of follow that profile so by using a fence and keeping the fence forward of the bearing the bearing is not running against the timber so you can actually get a cutter without a bearing but that one is one i use for lots of jobs but when i'm using green oak like this because of the chips and digs that you get on it um, that seems to work much better the other thing is as well is i've got that exactly centered so that creates my distance from the top everywhere so i'll show you what i mean by that so i'll run it up it will stop there i'll start it it will stop there and so on so there's no marking involved it's really straightforward let's get this bit finished you'll see what i mean That gives me my length. And then in the back here, I'll start again here. To the front and again. And that's it it's so easy and so quick because i'm not having to measure mark i'm just using the tool to do all the work 
So it's a matter of flipping the whole frame over now, doing the same on the back side, and then that's most of the machining done.